Hello, everyone. Can you all hear me, hear me well? Okay, cool. Yeah, I think I'm a cool guy. I do, uh, I do origami. I've been doing this for about uh, eight years now. Um, so as an origami artist, um, that means that I fold paper as a fine art form. How many of you guys have done some kind of origami before? That's good. That's a lot of hands. I like that. So you probably have some kind of impression on what, uh, what I do. If you've folded some kind of paper before, more than likely it's been like a crane or fish or something like that. And there's merit to uh, a lot of those, those studies. But uh, that's not the kind of thing I do. I do patterns. And um, I used to think of it as a challenge. Now, any, every artist has some kind of challenge when they're trying to make a living off of what they do. I don't have the same challenges as a lot of people. So artists, um, one of the big challenges they have is they try to, uh, they, they have to figure out ways to, to make their stuff look different from other people, to stand out. My stuff looks different, it's paper sculpture. Um, I have a hard time teaching people about it. Used to, used to do that as an inhibition. Nowadays it's more challenge, it's a good challenge too. And I'll get to that in a minute, but um, the idea that illusion is actually a benefit. So here we've got an image from Metamorphosis. You guys know M.C. Escher? M.C. Escher, if you're talking about art and illusion, this is the guy you want to talk about because he, uh, he deals a lot. He had uh, the steps, the infinite steps that go on. Um, in art, all of art is an illusion. It's all referential. If you've got you look on the left side, there's the fish. That's not actually a fish, it's a representation of a fish. And it's close enough that your mind is able to fill in the gaps, and then you're playing right in the artist's hands, right? He's got you. As your vision moves closer to the right, it starts to look less and less like a fish, but you have the memory of the fish from the previous part, so you're able to still maintain the illusion that it's a fish. And then by the time you get all the way to the right, well, there's no more fish anymore, and your mind just says, wait a minute, no, there's logic in there. It says, no, there's no fish. Wait a minute, no, no, there, there's birds now. Oh, that's cool. Okay, and now you've got that transition. Well, origami's kind of like that, it's an alchemy. It's not additive, it's not d uh, detractive, it's transformative. Well, it's not that fascinating. Uh, this is, um, Obviously, if you look at it, it's a painting of a waterfall. It's not a painting of a waterfall. I talked to the photographer, uh, a good friend of mine named Jeff Holcomb, and uh, he does microscopic images. He puts it right in the title that this is an image, it's a photograph of a moth wing. Now, he's actually using the idea that it starts off with you not knowing what it is, and then that illusion is ripped away from you when, it, when he tells you that it's a moth wing, not a waterfall. He's a cool guy, by the way. Uh, Jeff actually intends for the illusion to be lifted. He wants to teach you. So it's not, he's not being sadistic, he's not being mysterious or anything. He starts off that way, but it's, it's the process of having the illusion and then removing it over time. This is uh, a collaborative piece. Uh, I did it with my, my partner, Christine Delenta. It's obviously a charcoal drawing of a tower. It's not a charcoal drawing of a tower. So if you look at this video, you'll see actually how it was done. Take a look at this. Come in. Let's go. Right. You go in. So when the paper goes from white to black, it gets 
suppression of the light on the paper. This is light sensitive paper, which means that there's, it's a silver gelatin print, there's little silver filaments in there and what'll happen is it'll react to light. So if I hold a piece of silver gelatin photography paper under the light and then I expose it through normal photography method, it'll turn black, pitch black. You get an impression of the folds. If you fold it up beforehand, smack it with light, and then develop it. And that's what happened here. Okay, so you had the charcoal drawing of the tower. Great. And then that illusion was lifted from you when you saw the video. You saw, my, you heard my explanation of how it's done. But there's still more to the story. There always is. And there can never not be. And that's one of the, that's one of the cool things about art, is all the background, all the context. So, like, I'm not telling you how Christine and I met. Why it's a collaborative thing. I don't do photography. I do paper folding. Uh, I, was, I was in my studio. And uh, it, was, it was a new studio. Like, this, I just moved in there. It's a photography, it's a photographic resource center. It's called Photosynthesis. If, if any of you are photographers, I highly recommend you know, going there. It's not even two or three miles from here in Manchester. Um, great place, a lot of people, a lot, lot of great photographers. And the, among the first, this was probably in the first week, I met Christine, and she had been working with this photographic paper, folding it into various shapes. Um, she folded traditional paper crane, frogs, stuff like that, and she'd expose the paper through the layers to get an impression of the folds onto the paper. Uh, basic stuff, but she, she was making a good effort, and she saw what I did and said, do you want to collaborate? Well, no, it, it wasn't quite that simple. She said, uh, let's go in the dark room. I want to show you something. Just not, you know, <laughs> nothing like that. And I said, sure, and I said, let's, let's go check it out. And we started folding, and the first piece we made developed it, and it looked cool. It looked three-dimensional. Now, this is actually what the piece looked like while it was folded. You saw all of those mountains and valleys. It's one of the types of origami, or the, uh, the types of folds that are involved in origami. It's mountain and valley folds. You can see uh, this, this outline here is all valleys. And then as you go in, mountain, valley, all the way in. But even that's not the whole story, because you still have all the work that we had to do, all the time in the dark room, myriads of cups of coffee that we had to, that we had to make. Um, we ran a Kickstarter campaign to get it all framed up because that's expensive. Uh, we're still putting out the rewards for that too. But, um, you know, and then I had my first solo show at Photosynthesis with Christine. It was a photography show. I'm an origami artist. My first solo show was a photography show. I always thought that was weird. And as I finish this bugger up, um, moving a little slower than I expected. Sorry about that, guys. This is a type of paper. It's called elephant hide. It's a book binding paper. I could go into a lot of the context of what this paper is, how it was made. Um, you know, the history of it, history of origami. This might be of interest to you. But for now, just cram it all down. It's fine art right there. So then you go on to how to use illusion to make a point. If you want to do a shape of some kind, if you want, if you like this design, we could have done anything. We could have used charcoal. We could have flat out drawn it with a pen or pencil. Um, we didn't have to. We, we wanted to do this. We wanted to do a collaboration. If I wanted to draw, for example, a diamond, I could, and it would be kind of boring compared to this guy. You see a little diamond in there. This looks especially good, I think, under the lights, because uh, this is a technique called chiaroscuro, which is Italian for light and dark. 
Can I say that? Love it. It's a, it's a style that was developed by an Italian artist named Andrea Russo. It uses diagonal lines, creases, well, in this case, orthogonal creases, mountain and valley folds. And what they're going to do is they're going to hit a diagonal defined intersection, or d defined shape there, which is the diamond in this case, and they'll reflect. That reflection causes you to focus on the intersections, and you see the shape, even though it's not really, it's distorted. So that's using illusion to, uh, to bring out a piece. I'm glad that didn't fall. This is probably one of the most complicated pieces I've ever done. I call it deconstruction study. Uh, it's one sheet of paper, no cuts, no glue, because that's how I work. Uh, I could go so far deep with stories and context for how this piece was created. Um, I could tell you about how, you guys know what a tessellation is? Tessellation is just a tiling. You take a you take shape, you tile it out. There's this little honeycomb thing. It's tessellated out, and then at some point, I decided, you know what? Something in the coffee that I was drinking, I drink a lot of coffee, said, wait a minute, no, 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 that's, that's boring. Let's crack it and have these fragments that fall off. So instead of this tiling, you have it's like pieces of rock in a lava stream, and it's just flowing away. But then I could go into more context. I could tell you about other pieces I did at the same time. This was shortly after uh, Christine and I met and we started framing up our pieces together. And I decided, you know what, I'm gonna go more into compositional stuff. Most of the stuff I did up to that point were studies. They were full out tessellations, just a pattern all the way out to the end. And they're still fun, but they weren't compositional pieces of art. And that's what I wanted to do. So I started that series. I could tell you about what other artists are doing that are similar to that, that we're doing it at about the same time and are still doing it. I could tell you about conventions. I could tell you stories about folding on a train and then Christine and I going to uh, a photography show in Pittsburgh. And I talked with this guy, uh, and I'll turn to a photographer named Jeff uh, Jefferson Heyman. Really nice guy. And I, was, I was talking to him and he, he looks at me and he says, do, do you ever take the bus or the train uh, through Springfield. I said, well, I used to take the bus, you know, the train a lot from uh, Pittsburgh to Hartford, because my father lived in Pittsburgh. I lived in the Hartford area, Manchester. Used to take the train back and forth. And he says, I think I remember somebody folding paper and talking to me for hours and hours on end years ago. It had to have been at least five years ago. And I turned to him and I say, I think I remember that. Those little connections, like I remember being, so I did a study abroad in France. I was in aix en provence uh, which is in the south. And I was at a boulangerie and I was studying this because it was really the study. You have, to, you have to figure out how the pleats intersect and there's a math system all to it. Oh man, I can go into that. Uh, and I was trying to figure, I was using normal printer paper to figure out the, the physics of it. And I was sitting down in the boulangerie, drinking coffee, folding paper, and a little Romanian boy comes up to me, and I saw his, his mother, sister, and him walk past all the time. Very obvious that they were homeless. And the little Romanian boy sat down, asked me for a pen. I gave him one sheet of paper, and he just drew. And I folded hours and hours, and we did that several times throughout my trip. It's a story to tell. All of these different things, it's more than just a piece of artwork. It's the whole, the entirety of the world around it. And what comes up, what leads you to that point? Other pieces you do, what the artist is thinking, how much coffee they've drunk, the, <laughs> the, the, the interactions you have. So um, if you guys go to art shows, you should. You really should. You read the, read the artist statements, uh, read the philosophy, talk with the artist if you can. Any kind of art form, visual, magical, you know, performance art, uh, television, whatever, they're going to have behind the scenes things. And those all factor into what the final product is. So thank you all, and enjoy the rest of the conference.